Grace and mercy and peace belong to you, from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's light our candle as we take a moment around the living word of our, of our Savior. A lit candle, whether you are having a, a devotion as a family or as a couple, or if it's, if it's you and your Lord for a few moments in his word, a lit candle can be a vivid reminder that in this troubled world of darkness, Jesus always is the light of the world. You see what's behind me? Thanks to the beautiful fruits of faith of all kinds of, of, of members of our congregational family, our pantry, our church pantry at present, is simply overflowing. Uh, we're getting ready for a significant meal giveaway for lots of needy families as we approach Thanksgiving. And you see just a small portion of, of the generosity of God's people in these tables behind me. Some of the baskets have already been prepared, but that's just part of it. In our pantry itself, off to, my, off to my right, there's much more. Upstairs, there are all kinds of, of goods and, and, and bags, uh, all kinds of, of varieties of food that are ready to go. And so we truly are blessed. The Holy Spirit through the gospel has moved members of our congregational family to give and not only give but to give generously thanks be to god for that because of it our pantry at present is overflowing and so in connection with that as we prepare to give away this food and, and as we pray a prayer to to have uh, our own significant meals as we get ready for thanksgiving how is your spiritual pantry? Is your spiritual pantry filled with food that others may need because they are spiritually hungry? They are spiritually empty. If you have, for instance, a, a grandchild who is discouraged about something going on in his or her life. Are you ready with a morsel of, of God's word to give an encouragement? Or do you just tell them to keep their chin up and, and change the subject? Or if you have a, a son or a daughter who is struggling, do you have a morsel of the living word of God to give them? Or if you have a, a friend or a co-worker or a neighbor whom you bump into who is struggling, who is anxious, who is burdened, who is confused, who, who just feels empty all around, troubled by, by all the troubles going on in our world at this time, do you have something of substance to give them? Or how about yourself? Are you fed mightily with true meat from the living word of God, true promises that you can sink your teeth into and fill your soul so that even as you are surrounded by the anxieties of this life, you are filled and you are satisfied and you are certain in the promises of your living Savior. We all need to confess to each other that there are periods when you and I can allow our spiritual pantries to get empty. And when that happens, not only do we uh, starve our, ourselves so that our relationship with our Lord gets, gets thin and, and, and fragile, then it also means that we are not in a position to strengthen and feed others with the, the true encouragement that they need. But that's why our Lord Jesus is so stubborn in his grace, so stubborn in his love for you and me. 
again and again. He comes to us. He calls us to repentance. He gives us the wake-up call that we need if we have been starving ourselves of the promises of the Lord. And when he brings us to repentance, he then assures us in his gospel that he went to the cross to wash us clean, to cover us in his holiness, and to embrace us in his untiring arms. And then he gives us that fresh invitation all over again to come, to be filled, to eat heartily of his word uh, in, our, in our private meditation on God's word as we gather with our fellow believers and gather around his gospel to see to it that we are encouraged by his word and that he through us is an encouragement towards others. And so to the glory of God, you and I can take a moment to be reminded that as wonderful as this is to have a, an overflowing area full of, of physical food, by God's grace, the pantry of our soul can be filled to overflowing with the living promises of our Savior. The Word of God is a familiar one. If, if you've been listening to uh, some of these devotions over these past months, this is the Word of God from Isaiah chapter 55. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. You who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me, hear me, that your soul may live. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.